I'm Pac-Man James at the Poker Room Podcast. Shout out to Akita and the Cash. We'll say that in the start, the finish, and the end. And today my guest is Marvin Young, extraordinary actor. Mr. Young, how you making it today? Come on, man. You putting a lot on. Extraordinary actor. I like how you said that. Well, what's going on? I'm good. I love that. Well, I got to put a lot on it. You know, once people <laughs> check out the resume yeah. and the catalog, they'll see I'm telling the absolute truth. I hear you. I hear you. That's what's up. Yes, sir. Marv, what area are you born and raised? Um, I'm from Opelousas, Louisiana. Born and raised, man. Okay. Born okay. and raised. Yeah. Right down the road. Yeah. Acadiana. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from these parts. I actually lived in Lafayette for a couple of years before I moved to Opelousa, so, yeah. Born and raised, man. Acadiana Zone. Mm-hmm. Acadiana Zone, Morris Chestnut. From the boat. Y'all all will realize <laughs> that I'm telling the like absolute it. truth once we get deeper into this interview. <laughs> Morris Chestnut. Yes, like sir. That. Morris. <laughs> Denzel. You know, I hear that. Go ahead. Quinn bro. Tarantino. Who? All right, now. The Hughes Brothers. <laughs> What age did you figure out you have the talent and charisma to become an actor? Uh, it probably started at a young age, man. Um, we were heavily in church when I was growing up. So um, my uncles and my dad um, they had this uh, quartet group they used to have back in the G. And uh, I was a part of it along with a few of my other cousins. Um, and they threw us out in front of a crowd very early. So um, I was able to get comfortable with you know an audience you know at a very early age. And, of course, picking up an instrument. Um, you know, of course, I'm a drummer too. Um, from doing that, man, I just, you know, I knew I had something off, more to offer based on, you know, me being so involved in, in those activities. So, it just kind of grew, man. At a young age, I, I probably, I probably knew for sure though. Probably when I got into my adult age, I wanted to take it a little bit further. But I always had like the mindset of kind of creating on the spot, um, taking the initiative to, you know, I guess in order to get a laugh, kind of working it out in a way, um, low key. Real low key, I would love to do stand up if I had if I built enough courage to actually do it and actually because I have ideas in my head I just haven't put them on paper and I've always been like that. Um, but it's things like that, not getting off topic. Um, that kind of kind of built that confidence for me to know I can I can do a little bit more than what I was doing. So okay. yeah, I knew very young and I can do some other stuff. Were you the one that made the family laugh when you were young? Yeah, yeah, I do that now. What I would even try, and it's just you know it's my personality, and I'm like a a big bubble of energy at times, so it was kind of second nature. You know what I mean? You should go to the uh, open mic night at uh, that they, they do at JSP. Uh, really? I think it's every week. Yeah, they just just open mic stand up. Uh, just and you'll see, you'll see some bad bad people. It'll make Dude, you, it'll make I'm you feel terrified. it'll make you feel comfortable. Jesus Christ! I wouldn't even know where to start. Like even if I went up there, like I was just kind of starting with opening joke, I wouldn't even know what to say. Yeah, you can do like two minutes. You can do five. Like probably most is like five minutes. But, yeah. But yeah, just power through and. I think the, I think the the hardest part is just doing it once, you know. Right. Yeah. Just kind of yeah, because that's that's how it is with the whole acting thing. Because you know, when, most times when you're doing it, you're in a room with about I mean, depending on the size of the budget, you're in there with about ten, fifteen other people, and you have to act. You have to know you're not know your lines and all that stuff. So once I got over that fear, I'm like, all right, well, everything else is easy. But I know being a comedian, oh, that's a totally different ball game. And what's funny is, which is is totally a huge contradiction to what I'm doing now, because I have to memorize lines. But doing stand up, I'll have to memorize my material. So I'm like, I'm terrified at. But that's that's one thing I want to tackle. I want to try that for sure. Okay, uh, yeah. you mentioned that Carter is that with Lafayette Comedy Club? Yeah, well, well, it's called the organization is called Lafayette Comedy, um, okay. and so, and, but they're the ones who also like they have uh, at the Double Tree uh, on Pinhook. They have like Club Three Three Seven. They have a bunch of like national. You were telling me about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So saying, okay, mm-hmm. cool. I might mess around with that, man. Please do. You oh, know. my God. They, they also do a show. It's called, um, I think, Drunk, High, and Sober, where they have a comedian uh, who is sober yeah. tell, like, like do some material. Then a comedian who's hammered doing some material. Then a guy who's, who's blitz at high out of his mind doing some material. And then I think the audience, like, picks who is, like, the best. What? And it's just, it's like, it's apparently just pure chaos. But a really fun show. I really want to check it out one time. Yeah, that, that sounds like something that would be chaotic as well. The freshman year movie was that your first first role? Uh, no, that was actually probably the first bigger budgets um, film that I've actually done because um, I actually had some um, I want to say probably like B list talent, um, a lot of people from LA. Um, I know one for sure that stands out um, that was there was uh, Denzel Whitaker that was a part of the cast. There were some other people too. I can't think of her name, man, but she's played she played Moesha's mom. On Moesha, the Brandy show. Okay, she was a part of that film as well. Um, 
a few other ones that's that's in there. I just can't remember all the names, but yeah, that was kind of the first bigger budget in Houston uh, film that I've, I've ever done. Yeah. Speak to me, Mar- Speak to me, Marv. Mm-hmm. What are you, what are some of your favorite roles to play? Favorite roles to play. Um, I love a good uh, comedic role. I love a, a good drama filled role. Um, anything that, that kind of stretches me as an actor, I, I like to play. So anything that builds suspense, something that um, you can look at me and and know who I am personally, but seeing that character, you you really can't tell you know from who's who. I, I like playing characters like that. That kind of really uh, pushes me to go to a different level as far as the story is concerned. So that way it can be you know believable. But I like anything that's going to stretch me, man. Anything that's going to show my range. Because I do think I'm funny. I do think that, you know, I'm good at drama, um, rom- romantic comedies, um, all that. Anything that stretches me as, as an actor, I, I would like to play. What's your method for getting in character? Um, Reading the script, first off. Um, but then just trying to connect to whatever that emotion is, whatever, that, whatever story that they're trying to tell. Uh, so, for instance, so if, you know, I know that he's, I don't know, I'm just throwing something out there. Um, if he's a lawyer and he has to win a case, like I'm taking all emotions from whatever it feels like to win, what it feels like to lose, uh, uh, tapping into whatever that emotion is to actually need something, desperately need something. Um, and also just trying to find instances in my life that I've, or situations rather, I've lived through and kind of applying it to that. And, you know, that kind of creates emotion too. So I just kind of take my time, not being so involved with things that's going to distract me. I just kind of live with that character for you know a couple of weeks until I shoot. Okay. Yeah. What movie and role did the audience check out, like your fans, and were like, "Man, this guy's here to stay. He's uh, serious. He means business." Probably, man. The, the my biggest fan was a good one for me. Although the, I mean, audio was good. I wish it, you know we we could have done a little bit better with that. But my biggest fan is one. Um, and um, another one I, w- I would like them to see probably would be a Hero was a good one too. Um, Most definitely a good one. Everybody yeah, check it out if you haven't. Yeah, Hero is good. And uh, Perfect Wife 2 is good too. Uh, it's, it's, I like that one too. Um, Secret Obsession. I, it's not, I'm not in there much, um, but I like the concept of the story though. I like, I like what they're doing with that one. It's a little bit different. Um, this is by my man, uh, my guy. Um, uh, Ahmad Kendrick, um, I'm sorry, not Kendrick Contrell. You can find him on Instagram. I am Contrell. Um, it's actually a good, real good friend of mine. But he killed that as long, uh, along with uh, Christopher St. Mary. He also killed that role. Um, Kenya, a few other people that's in there. Um, yeah, they can check those films out and um, they can see that's something happening. Okay, you know what I'm saying that's that's some. I would say something stirring up there that you know they probably could start taking me serious based on those films. Okay. Yeah. How was it working with Toby? Oh man, uh, <clears throat> working with Toby was oh man, that's we did that a couple years ago. Um, Toby's different, man. Toby's about the work. Um, I've spoke to him um, briefly while doing that, but he's serious about his work. He not he not about no plan. And as far as my personality, people that know me and how I am, I'm a bubbly person. So you know my personality is big. So when I see him do certain things and I was be hollering, I'm like, yeah, dude, with the woo, but like he didn't give me no reaction. He was just like, hush. Like he was just really locked into his work. Um, but I think he's a hell of an artist, man. Um, he's deep, solid, grounded. Um, he's for the people. Uh, I love his music. Um, and when it comes down to just, you know, executing a plan, that's all he focuses on. Like he's not trying to get, you know, sidetracked and do other things and add to it. Like, we were out there, man. I think it was somewhere around San Antonio. I think it was the location. Out there in some uh, some ranch. And I'm, I just remember it being really, really cold. And I was out there with no shirt on. In San Antonio? And it was San cold? Antonio, it was, I want to say, around that area. Not San Antonio specifically, but it was somewhere, somewhere in Texas. Let me say that. But I think it was somewhere outside of San Antonio, if I'm not mistaken. Or it could have been. Nope, I'm lying. I lied to your face. Austin. It was outside. It was close to that area. Okay. I know that. Um, but it was extremely cold. It was just some ranch where it was just trees and field. And if you look at the video, um, where we are, where he's sitting in the field and we're in chains and we're dancing, um, bro, I'm, I'm freezing. Like I, I literally have goosebumps all over my body. Like I'm, 
I can barely stand still how cold it is out there. And we done the take, I would say probably like seven to eight times. And we were out there literally all day to get the shots that he wanted. But he was so locked into it, this is what he wanted to do. And this is what we made happen. And the video came out dope. But I just said that to kind of align with what I was saying as far as how serious he is with executing his plan. Okay. Because he wasn't he wasn't letting that go. He was going to make that happen. It didn't matter how cold it was. But the video was dope. <coughs> I really, and really, and truly enjoyed that experience. It was amazing. Yeah. That's dope. You have a music video cameo of, of in Heartless with uh, Tiandra that's premiered on BET Jams. Could oh, you touch yeah. on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tiandra, she's uh, homegrown, Lafayette. She's from here. Uh, she's living in Houston. Um, I had a good friend of mine, man, um, Chris, Chris White. Um, he also can go. We can look him up, too. He's, uh, he goes by uh, Dub, Dub Artistry. He's an artist, too. But he pulled me in to do um, to do the video because he had saw some of my acting. Me and him are real good friends, too. Um, but I got pulled into the video, man. I, I ended up doing the leading role of it. And um, I didn't know that it was going to be on B&T until I actually started doing the video. And then when I did it, I was like, oh, snap. This actually is probably about to be on BET. Like it was, it was, it was over and done with. I had, you know, finished the project, and then when it actually aired, it blew my mind because I've been watching BET all my life. So when to actually see my face on the TV, it just, it just blew my mind. And I knew then I was like, yeah, I, I want to continue doing this. This ain't gonna never stop. Nah, but the song is, uh, it's called Heartless Man. Um, I think it's streaming really well on all platforms. So y'all get a chance, check it out too. Uh, shout out to Tandra, um for plugging me into that. I really appreciate that. Shout out to Tom. Yeah. Deal yeah. Breaker Studios presented top actors of Houston. Mm -hmm. How you feel about being viewed in that light? Oh man, I'm honored. Um, just to put, yeah, to have people look at me in the, in the and what really just take me serious, really, as far as the art and being able to see it, um, and know what I you know what I come with, um, and trust me to play these roles that they want me to be a part of. So, um, it was a huge honor, man. I, I truly appreciate being a part of that. Um. Because a lot of people, it's not just anybody that could be taking these pictures and be involved or, or categorized with, you know, top actor in Houston. Um, they handpicked these people, and um, I was fortunate to be one of the people picked. So I'm, I'm truly appreciative of uh, uh, Jonathan Mills. He's actually the one that, that put that on. So uh, shout out to them, the whole whole squad. Justin, it was his twin brother. Everybody connected to that, man. If it wasn't for those guys, I probably, that was my first people to really, well, they were the first people to really put me uh, in position to be you know, on Tubi and all those streaming platforms. So, you know, huge shout out to them I'm forever. We're gonna work with them. Yeah. A memory touched me to the soul. The Blackish Eternal platform is phenomenal. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You can enlighten us a little, a little bit on that. Oh, say it again. A memory. A memory. Which is like, you know, you said a poem. Yeah. A poem on the, the Black Eternal platform. Oh, yeah. With, um, shoot, my man. Oh, God. I can't think of his name right now. It's on top of my head. Black is Eternal. They do it every year, man, for Black History Month. Um, Vincent Powell. That's his name. It's him and his wife. Um, they put that on every year. You talking about the piece that I had on Instagram? Yeah. It was on oh, Instagram. man. He took me back with that one. What was my piece? That was the. Uh, it's called a memory. Yeah, it was. I, I'm trying to think of the guy that actually uh, who wrote it though. Oh, well, you stole me with that one, boy. I can't even remember the piece, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I actually done it. Uh, but we done that in the, not necessarily a forest, but like in some. Uh, was that last year or year before? I think that was last year we did that. It was cold in too. I can't remember the piece, man. Man, it was beautiful. I appreciate that, man. The platform like, for Black History Month, I, I, I see there's a lot of uh, poets or actors, mm -hmm. and they give them the poems. Yeah, they do pretending poems. Pretending to Black History. Yep, they do poems. They do uh, they do songs. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a real dope experience, man. He's actually a real dope director in, in Houston. Uh, he graduated from USC, and he's uh, he's from Houston. And he moved back to kind of push that, that art. And uh, they're doing a phenomenal job, and they got some other work that's coming too. In fact, the one, the freshman you just mentioned, he was the director on that, so that's a part of his work. So, um, not sure when that's going to drop or is that even going to come out, to be honest. But yeah, they're, they're phenomenal people, man. Yeah, I can't remember that piece you just brought that up. Now I'm gonna go back and look at it. Oh man, yeah, you stopped me with that one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, you I like the whole content. I, yeah. I seen their vision. Yeah, you see, like the the I guess the reason for dressing all in black, and then there's um the year before that, I did um oh man, we did it in the studio, 
and I had to recite a, a poem then. But their whole thing is is just kind of bringing, I guess, the whole theme and the ambiance is Black history. So where they're shooting it is like more of a not not necessarily I want to say an African feel, but depending on the piece, they set up the background to kind of push that that out. Mm-hmm. That makes sense because if you notice from the piece I did, we were in the in the, in the trees or in the forest rather, and it was kind of you know how we live, you know, how we escaped from, you know, slavery and all stuff like that. You know, we a lot of times we ran through the woods and all that. So they try to set that scene and get that lighting on it to kind of, you know, push the message. So I think they're amazing at what they do, man. That's dope. To say that, to say this, mm-hmm. have you seen that California is giving African Americans reparations, 223,000? Jesus, no, I didn't see that. You didn't see it? No. Yeah, it's, it's in the works. It's, it's really happening for real? Yeah, it's really happening. Do you think it's going to make its way to the South? <laughs> Nah, I, I don't see it happening. If if it does, it's it's not going to be overnight thing. I can't believe I wow. Let's wait. So wait. So they're giving reparations to people in California. And you in said California, two hundred and twenty three thousand. Two hundred and twenty three per person. That is actually happening. That's a thing. That's, that's happening. It's in motion. Wow. No, I didn't know that, man. I don't think they'll ever make it to the south. I well, was it, shocked. It, it should. Happened. It should have been in the south first. Yeah, absolutely. That's you where know. it started. So if it had to happen in California, this is this crazy. But you know, usually when stuff like that does happen, um, it's not something that's that's done overnight. It's usually something that's kind of spoke about, then it disappears, and then you know you may hear it resurface later on. But I, I don't really see it. So if it do, I'll be shocked if it actually went through. Because that's just like with me and uh, um, I'm bringing up these school loans. Like I'm trying to get all my school loans wiped away. I don't now it's on pause. Like I don't I don't ever see it really be something that powerful. I don't think that's really going to be a thing. But we'll see. I'm always optimistic about stuff like that. Yeah, according to the L.A. Times here, it says that they have a right now they have a task force and they're trying to figure out in in California, um, I guess, trying to figure out like the specifics of how they're going to divvy out those reparations. That's great. So wait, two hundred and twenty three thousand and some odd change to each individual black person. Yeah, that's what you're telling me. Well, I think there has to be like proof that. Your family did originate from slavery, uh-huh. which is from the south, oh. right? A lot, yeah. So why, uh, you know? I'm sure there's crazy. a lot of people who moved from the south throughout, you know, the hundreds of years to L. A. Oh, right. for sure. that's true. Or, yeah. or California, East right. Coast too. I'm sure there's a whole bunch Massive. of people that's yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I didn't know that. That's news to me. Now but, I gotta research that. We're getting off the so- the topic a little bit. Mm-hmm. Carter, maybe you can help me. Uh, is the government shut down due to uh, student loans? Have you heard that? Well, they, I know, um, I, I applied for it because, uh, I mean, it, well, I mean, it, it, it goes against my morals a little bit, uh, my, my libertarian views, but at the same time, though, you know, I need that. I need that. <laughs> right, I gotta right. have it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but right now, yeah, like, uh, I think a federal judge uh, said that what Biden's trying to do is illegal and he can't do it. So it's, it's kind of like in his little holding period. So mm. I, I might imagine that it, it won't happen and they're just going to get it back because everything's still paused though Man. so like you're, you don't have to pay anything right now but i think as of right now it's like next like december or november i think it picks back up if they don't get it pushed through yeah like i guess I, I hate to have that mindset of it but it's like i just feel like anything that's anything that's too good like that it just never happens. yeah I mean, the money's not gonna like just disappear right. like, someone's gonna end up paying for something down the line something. yeah yeah but well, at the end of the day they, re- they uh partnered with the ppp same thing mm. Mm. yeah I'm yeah. pretty sure the figures was about the same with student loans. Mm-hmm. So I got a question for you. Um, me and my friends made this movie a few years ago called Silent But Deadly. Mm-hmm. It's about killer mimes. Just genius title. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember we went to try and find actors. We went on Craigslist and found a bunch of Craigslist actors. No and way. It's, it's a mixed bag, <laughs> to say the least. But my question is, like, what is what is your process for, for booking roles? Um, usually being, a, you know, I'm in Houston. Um uh, after you do so many films, you know people start to pay attention. So it's a, it's kind of a Houston is huge, but also very small as far as the industry that I'm in. So a lot of times um, they either have a role that they want me to play, or they'll write something that they saw me playing and they'll put it together. Um, and a lot of times, as far as audition wise, if I do have to audition for it, um, a lot of times they'll just send me the sides for it, and I'll set up a ring light. Or I'm actually trying to beef that up too, because um, a lot of times you can audition from your, uh, your cell phone yeah i imagine a lot of that especially since covid yeah yeah so they put their ring light in and you know put the phone into it and, and go from there but um i try to um if there is a dish if they just not you know the woman to play it 
you know, I audition for it. I always look around on Actors Access, Actors Backstage. Well, Backstage. Is that like a, it's a site where you can go find roles? Mm-hmm. Yep. So you can actually upload your own. Um, let's say if you're looking for actors, you can go to those sites and put that there. And actors are actually request to audition. And you have like roles. you have like a profile. You put like your yep. reel and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And all that, though. Um, I have actually a little clips that's on there. Um, just to, you know, kind of give the casting director some variety as to what they can see. So um, on the site, what I'm understanding is a lot of times they don't like to see um, long videos of you acting. Mm-hmm. They like to maybe see 10, 15 seconds of clips. So I have a few of, their, a few of those on there where they can just go and, and tap, see what they want. And, um, you know, based on my audition, if it works, it works. If not, go on to the next thing. But that's typically what's being used, Actors Access, because even my agent sends me all, actually, all my auditions come from Actors Access if it's not in Houston. Um, and this kind of just goes from there. Are you a member of SAG? Yeah. No, actually, I'm eligible um, to become a member, but it's those fees, man. Jeez. And I've, I feel like if I'm going to become a member of SAG, like I have to pay like $3,000 to even become a member. But I'm down south. So being that I'm not doing a whole lot of filming in New Orleans, I feel like for me in my area that I'm in, it's it's not really worth it. Because in that case, doing indie films or something that doesn't have a huge budget, I mean, they have to pay me a certain thing, which means they'll have to obviously go with somebody else because they can't afford me. Yeah, but what's, what's, what are like the perks? Perks, um, you'll get hired. Um, that's number one. Um, it kind of gives you... Um, like a union, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, like health insurance? No. Through SAG? No. Well, I, I think they do offer it, but I, of course you have to be a member and all that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, th- those are the type of the perks that you would get, um, you know, being a SAG artist, because they'll make sure, obviously, that you eat at the end of the day. Um, but it's just like nothing different from being, you know, a rail wo- railroad worker or somewhere, like working in a, 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 the post, post office. Like being a part of, the, part of that union, you're protected. So that's kind of like the same thing. So I, I just have it for actors. You have a few roles with a few SAG uh, actors, I uh-huh. see. Yeah, yeah. One uh, that stuck out to me. I forgot her name. <sighs> who that? Blonde chick. Uh, Emily? Yeah. Peg- uh, Kampora? Yeah, that's yeah, her. Yeah, good people, man. She actually just moved to L.A. Yeah. Um, me and Emily done a film. Actually, she casted me off of Access Access. We had done a movie prior called Deception. Um, you can also find that on um, streaming platforms. But we are in that film, and we just kind of stayed connected. Um, and I think they had something that came up. Someone else needed um, her type uh, in a film, and I recommended her, and they and they casted her, and she just returned the favor. She had a film that she was doing, um, "The Elephant Never Forgets." I think it's what it's called. had hadn't dropped yet. Love that title. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, she made me a doctor in it. That was my first first opportunity to play a doctor. So that was that was pretty cool. But. Um, I think I think at her boyfriend. That's what I want to say, boyfriend friend. Um, let me be politically correct. Um, he was a, a surgeon. He was a, um, I think it was a plastic surgeon. So he had. Uh, I think he was going through his. Um, I don't know what they call it. I don't know if it's clinicals or, or what. But he had access to a hospital, man. Like that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Like he had access to a hospital. And we shot the whole film, majority of it especially my role, my scenes in the hospital. And I thought that was so dope because they literally shut down the whole floor and they had access to whatever. So I was in there looking at x-rays and things like that. So that's where those pictures come from on my Instagram um, from that actual film. So I thought that was that was crazy dope. Yeah. Really Emily dope. Kempora. Bashful in the noise showed the real that Marvin Young can dominate a stage play. Yeah. yeah. Should we be expecting more stage plays? Yeah, man, I want to do more. Um it just uh, just depends on what's available out there, but I want to do something that tells a story. And um, Bass for the Noise was was just that actually, um, because it told a story in a different light. And it was actually something I was scared to touch, to be honest. Um, but it told Why? It, it, really because anything, anytime you mix, um, just from being being a heterosexual man and being, um, I guess exposed because the whole the whole cast the whole cast were gay, right? Um, I'm just being transparent. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mind talking like that. Um, the whole trend, the whole cast was gay, and mind you, I'm not homophobic by any means. I love everybody, but a lot of t- the conversation, right? The play was about the uh, this guy's kid lost his mom, right? And now he's obviously he's a gay young man, and being that the guy, his father was one of those strong, you know, independent black, you know. He didn't really have that sensitive 
side to himself to tend to his kid like that. He was just really trying to do whatever it is that he could. In fact, he didn't really even stick around to even have those conversations. He let his wife do that. So he was just kind of out working and doing whatever it is. Putting food on the table. Yeah, that else. type of thing. So he really risen. He was present but wasn't. Um, so the whole play was about how and what he was going to do or how he was going to go about creating a relationship with his son that lives a totally different lifestyle than he does. And mind you, he's not as judgmental, but he is in, in a sense because he doesn't understand that type of life. But he still knows he loves his son. And at the end of the day, he was going to do whatever it is that he needed to do to create a relationship with him. And I was scared to touch it at first because I was like, I didn't know how that was going to be taken. If I can pull it off or I can kind of. Um, but I got into it, man. It was one of the best things I did. Um, in fact, um, shout out to Ark. He was the one that, that put me um, into that. And I think he's in the works of having it published. But it was just a different side of how we communicate, even as black men. Um, and, and how sometimes just how we overlook people's emotions and how they feel and how we're affecting other people by the things we say, we do, how we move. Um, and I think it was an extraordinary story uh, being told by Arg because it was it was coming from a personal place. And the same, what's funny about this, the same friend, family member that his father was trying to push on to them, like, hey, you know, y'all do manly stuff, y'all go play around, this and that, was the same person that was molesting him. So it was kind of, it, it, it was deep, you know what I mean? It, it was a real deep thing. And it was, like I said, it came from a personal experience um, from one of the cast members, which is why it was written. But um, it, it was just, in so many words, man, it was just, you know, finding better ways to communicate amongst ourselves. And especially, you know, with our children, because they watch everything that we do. And depending on how you say or, or how you treat, you know, those situations can really determine how the relationship between you and your child you know, can go forward. How can it be affected? Uh, could it bring y'all closer, or could it, you know, bring a wedge? Um, and I just, I just think the whole thing was was dope. How it was put together, man. But I was scared to touch it. I was scared to touch it, and I'm, and I'm happy I did go forward with it because it actually opened my eyes to, you know, a, a different thing. Um, and knowing that, you know, nobody's the same. Everybody has their own experiences. Everybody thinks differently. Um, but what it comes down to is um, moving in love and learn, learning how to communicate effectively. Um, we don't want to shut people down when they're trying to tell us how they're being affected and what their experiences are dealing with you. And you have to be, you know, mature and you have to be, um, you know, an adult in that moment and accept it and try to be better. Um, but you can't shun the person away because they don't think or look or act like you. So, right. Yeah. That's my thing. You know, being African-American, every household, whether it's your grandma, your mom or your auntie, watch soap operas. Right. Watch the stories. And I've noticed then in some roles you play, the ladies can't keep their hands off you. <laughs> are you or are you not turning an obliged eye to a role in a soap opera or the stories, you know? Oh, uh, no, nah, I think I can play one. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, as the world turns and all that stuff. Yeah, um, not to cut you off, because this is a bad boy, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> you, know, you know. I appreciate you that, know. man. I appreciate it's that. Next Victor Numa. <laughs> I definitely think I can. Um, I probably could pull that off. I, I haven't like looked at it like that because um, I hated the stories growing up, man. I saw my mom used to watch. I hated. Oh my god! But if opportunity came, I definitely, I I'll definitely play it for sure. Well, since your mom watched it, what was your favorite soap opera? Oh Jesus! And favorite actor on the soap operas? I don't even know none of the actors. I just know that's what's so crazy about it and how how this thing kind of evolved into something else because it was like I, I wasn't known to have any interest in as far as acting wise you know I always like i said i just like making people laugh so the whole acting thing was just kind of like a i guess a, a added i don't know attribute to my to my whole arsenal man i just like i said i wasn't i never thought of, i didn't know actors I, all i watched growing up was martin jamie fox comedy stand-ups like all all the like you know funny stuff that's all i was into um but seeing that man as you know as the world turns, or um, you couldn't turn the channel when they came on. You I, had to sit there and it. watch it or go outside. I, yeah, it was one or two, so you couldn't control the TV. It's just like either you're gonna sit there, like you said, and watch it, or you can go outside. So I went outside, and I was real big into like growing up. I always liked the Power Rangers and all that stuff. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That was my thing. So I'll go outside, and I literally would create a world for me to be in and be outside, literally jump, kicking, cutting flips with the broomstick. As if I was fighting mummies off of Power Rangers. So I always was a very imaginative 
imaginative um, kid. So I, you know, my my imagination would take me any and everywhere. I can be in a room and just be in a whole different place. So that was kind of like my safe haven. Um, but I never knew from that though. I was I was creating scenes, man. I was creating. Um, I was being an artist at that moment. And although I didn't know nothing about writing stuff down and kind of retaining some of the stuff I was creating, like I, w I was doing it then. I just didn't know how to, you know, I just thought, I just thought it was normal. I, I couldn't relate to you how, you know, this, that, and the third. But as I got older and understood what I was actually doing, then it started to all make sense. But I, the acting thing, bro, I, I don't know. I have no clue. As far as actors and, I, that played on any of those soap operas, <laughs> now a one. When I, I used to watch it, like I said, they would make a sit down, either go mm -hmm. outside or watch it and. He had no choice but to watch it. Yeah. Everybody know at least Reva and Victor Newman. <laughs> now I've heard Victor <laughs> Newman. I'm, I'm familiar with that. I've heard that name, but and the acting that. was impeccable. Was impeccable. Yeah, in stories. yeah, they different. Yeah, man, those people get paid well to do that. That's why it airs so long. That's why it stays on TV for so long. Like those people are freaking millionaires from that show, man. They get paid handsomely to do a show. Yeah, for sure. So what's uh, what does Louisiana need to do to get to that like next step in the film industry? Like Atlanta's obviously had like tons and tons of success. We've had some success mm -hmm. in, in New Orleans, and you know, getting more tax breaks for outside of just just New Orleans and mm -hmm. extending it to the rest of the state. But what, in your opinion, what do you think the state needs to do to kind of hit that next step? Um, that, that's actually it's funny you ask that because that's the same questions we asked um in Texas. Because if you notice, we Austin is probably the only city that that has um those type of films being done. Um, but I don't I don't know as far as a tax break. Like, we won't actually have, like, we, we, we couldn't be really called a mini Hollywood like an Atlanta or Louisiana um, because of the taxes. And the way the governor works there, well, I guess however they got it set up, they won't budget. They don't want to make Texas a film state, so they won't touch it. But as far as here, I mean, Louisiana is, is probably in Atlanta because Atlanta followed Louisiana's lead. Um, and changing up their tax and how they do the whole deal. So that's why you see films being done there. But I don't think anything really necessarily needs to change here because, like I said, it's already New Orleans is already freaking doing it. Um, I just think it just takes people. Um, it's a money game at the end of the day, man, creating those budgets and then not even really that, putting out really good content and having people invest and, and actually see what you're doing um, and then having people come to you versus you going to them. So it really starts with the work. Um, taxes aren't, aren't bad here like it is in Texas So yeah, it just really starts with the work We're putting out better content Which is why I mentioned to you As far as what I want to write and what I want to do Because I think it will be a good opportunity to show Especially Southwest Louisiana in a different light Because when you think of Louisiana Anybody that you speak to Is always New Orleans They, they, don't, they don't even mention Lafayette or Baton Rouge Or any of those places Seldomly they'll mention Baton Rouge um, But New Orleans is always the mecca or the pinnacle of what Louisiana is and what I want to do it with obviously my art and, and uh, the uh, show I'm really, I don't know if I want to make a show or a film, but that's why I want to do that so badly because it shows us in a different light and it also highlights our culture um, because I honestly, in my personal opinion, y'all can shoot me if y'all want, I really don't care, um, but I think we make better food down here than New Orleans. I see, I see that all the time. I see that all the time. My personal opinion, bro. It's just a bigger city and there's more tourists going there. So it. they take it and it's just highlighted. It. It's highlighted. It's just like it's like, you know, they just have more exposure there. But I think honestly we cook better food here. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a no brainer. But that's what I'm saying. So um being that that's what it is, it's just like with that with everything else. Uh, as far as our art and the way we create the things that we do, our music and everything else, it's not gonna be highlighted as much because we don't have the platform. So we have to work a little bit harder for it to be seen and for it to be shown in a different light. But that's why I want to do, you know, my joint. Because um, I definitely want to highlight. It's a lot of talent here, bro. A lot. And, you know, people become frustrated because they don't know how to maneuver and get into those spaces where they can get their work, you know, seen by the masses. So that's what I'm going to start working. That's what I'm, I'm going to work on. That's my plan for next year. And I'm saying it's on my birthday. So I know, yeah, I, I got to hold myself accountable to that. So Happy that birthday happen. too. I absolutely appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. So. Marv, the, te the revolution definitely will be televised, and what's a boot without the heel? Come on, man. Oh, that's a bar. What's a boot without the heel? All right. You know. I'll see you. In fact, <laughs> what's a boot without the heel? That's dope, man. That's dope. <laughs>
D Hill and yourself have great chemistry. Yeah. Should we be expecting more motion pictures from you guys? Um, actually, man, D um is doing a lot, man. D is actually um I just saw on her Instagram now she's doing a film with um uh Khalil Kane. Remember the guy from uh, uh Juice? Yeah. yeah, Tupac. Yeah, which one? On uh, the guy that he got killed first. He was a he was a light skinned guy with the uh, oh, okay the Raheem. Box. Yeah, Raheem. Raheem. Raheem got killed. So he, they're doing a movie now together um, out there in Houston, man. But she uh, she's rocking and rolling. She's doing a whole lot, man. Uh, you can look her up. Shout out to D um, on uh, Tubi, Apple TV, and all that. Just type in D Hill and, and she'll pop up. She has some dope films that's out too. Um, but as far as me and her working together, man, it's just like you know me, her, and, and everybody else in the industry in, in an area. Um, there's there's a few that you can put into a room and you know they have chemistry or they can understand you know what story that needs to be told or however you want to word that um, and the way that hero came about man that's exactly what that was like we went in we did the scene and it was like it, it was just something that just it was an effortless you know exchange between her and I when it came down to portraying those characters um and there's there's a few others in houston that that can do the same um but i, I don't think we have any more i think we have one more project that's going to be coming out called bruised uh i think that's going to be coming out in march i think it's the last one we did together um but uh like i said she has a, some 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 joints out there now that people can go look up and um really enjoy she got man i want to say at least 10 or 12 films on tubi or so on apple tv or something like that right now but um, I don't, don't, the only other project I have, like I said, is, is Bruise. But um, not at the moment. We don't have anything else else that's coming because she's doing a lot of work now. She's rock and rolling. Yeah, I feel like Tubi's been huge for independent filmmakers. Yeah, absolutely. Tubi's been been crazy. Um, but just like with everything else, um, I think it's gonna come to a point to where they're gonna have to start um, kind of dying down as far as what they're gonna be able to take because now it's gonna be you know oversaturated with just okay. independent film. So I think at some point. Um, you gonna start slowing down with that and what they accept. And that's to cut you way. off, Mar. Yeah, a lot of the I see what you say, like on Tubi is getting oversaturated because mm-hmm. there's a lot of hot slop on there. Yeah, 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 and that's what I'm saying. So when the more that that happens, they're gonna have to start, you know, plugging it. Like, okay, well now we're gonna have to stop this and have uh, the guidelines or the criteria be this for you to be on this platform because that's how it was with Amazon Prime. Everybody used to be on Amazon Prime, and then they started slowing down and slacking as to what they were gonna accept because. At the end of the day, you're still representing their platform, and Correct. if they continue to put on films that's just not, you know, up to par, then you know they're gonna have to start, you know, weaning those out and and really, um, you know, pushing their brand because they want obviously every platform wants to be known for good quality work, but um, if they continue to you know take stuff like that, you know, they gotta, they'll create a name for themselves that they don't want. So I think Tubi is going is going to head there. I don't know if it's going to be soon, but that's just what I hear. I mean, you know, for and pretty soon is the criteria is going to be a little bit different. Like you have to shoot with this type of camera, um, this type of you know whatever is needed in film for them to, you know, because I've even saw films that the sound is terrible. You can't you can't really hear anything because you know of course whatever however they had the boom or whatever their their sound was it just wasn't wasn't right. So yeah, they're gonna start making some changes soon. I feel it. Speaking of hot slop, you can check out my movie Sewer Gators on Tubi. <laughs> Stop that! It. It's critically which acclaimed. Which one? Check you, it out. Which one you showed me um, by the it, crib? That it was, was Sewer Gators. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't bad, bro. Yeah. That was <laughs> critically acclaimed. Uh, that, yeah, the song was good too. Uh, yeah, nice. damn appreciate good. it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was yeah, for real. Ridiculous movie, but I appreciate it. <laughs> it done what it was supposed to do. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I did that. Uh, good. We, we got we got some weird little rabid fans out in like like northern New York. <laughs> they, they like make like fan art and stuff. Oh, and upstate, upstate, yeah, upstate, yeah, upstate New York, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, like Buffalo, up, they like it. Yeah, we got some, we got some little follow. I think we just made like something like fifteen hundred bucks last month on, on Tubi. Which Congratulations! Is, I think we like Congrats, the bro. first time we ever got like hit <laughs> in the black <laughs> in a movie. For real. I know it's like after what ninety days, um, then you start getting residuals from it. Like, yeah, from some, the ads, something like that. My, yeah. my my buddy who's the director, he kind of handles all that, and he just kind of repeats it back to me. But uh, yeah, something like that. That's dope. That's dope. Marv, you work with a magnitude of directors. Mm-hmm. Which director you work with, when you read the script and the role, you was like, man, this guy has a vast imagination. Uh, I don't know if I can name just one. Um, I know Janard is probably the top of that list as far as how he, how he does that. Um, Milton Brothers. Um, I 
And these are people I've worked with, um, because they they you know, obviously produce the record, right? But you know, it'll probably be at the top of that list. I like Shannon's work too. Shannon's dope. Shout out to Shannon um, at Push Twenty Four Media. Um, I think Janor is a part of that part of it as well. Um, mm, I name one more. Uh, then when I saw the script, I was like, yeah, this this this, this the imagination is crazy. Um, Probably, um, God, I can't think of her name, but she's a writer too. It's another, her name is D2, but it's, uh, gosh, she's going to kill me for messing up her name. Oh, man. But, yeah, she she's, oh, Lord. Didi. Didi. She just go by Didi. Oh, God, Didi going to kill me. Didi's dope too. Uh, she's a writer. She works along with Jannard, but um, I don't think she has put anything out or directed anything herself. But just her pen, her penmanship, and her imagination is crazy. So, yeah, I think Didi is uh, part of that list as well. That's that's probably my top five. Obviously, not only because I work with them, but um, but I guess I've just been in the space and I've seen how they work. So, yeah, just in Houston, I haven't worked with you know a whole bunch of people um, in whole different areas. I've read some scripts from other people. My acting coach is a real dope writer, um, Renee Ravon. She's amazing. Um, her imagination is crazy. Um, but I don't think she's ever done any film for real. But I'm just kind of naming writers right now uh, since we mentioned, um, you know, people's imaginations. But, yeah, those, those people I just mentioned, uh, they're, they're, they're crazy dope. Yeah. Should we be looking to see your name behind a director's chair soon? Um, I've, I've co-directed. Uh, shout out to Malcolm, man. Um for uh he, he actually done a season um I, I forget about my man um i love that movie yeah I man he movie. uh freaking um he wrote the season and he allowed me to co-direct so that was kind of like my first taste of pretty much saying cut and action behind the camera um which is dope because I, I love to create and put and you know put the pieces together and create the scenes um so that was kind of my first little taste of that and I was I was real appreciative of that appreciative of that. I don't know if I'll do more of it. Just kind of depends on my film. If I do, not if when I do that, I'm probably going to direct that. When should we be expecting that? But sometime next year, man. That's the most I can say. We are about to start the script um, writing process uh, next month. Actually, um, shout out to my guy G and uh, and Jamal. Uh, we're supposed to get together, man, and just come up with this concept. Um, but it's going to be different because. Um, one of them is from New Orleans. The other one, I think, is from Texas. We're all from the South, but I think what I'm trying to write as far as um, putting Appaloosas, our 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 culture, and the way you know we we live, um, I'm really gonna have to implement that into the script and make sure it's right before it actually comes out for real. So it's, I think that's it may be a little task, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely. Uh, I'm gonna do that next year, and I'm I'm, I'm a directed act and and produce. Jesus Christ! Whew. Besides the movie you're directing and the, putting your name on the back of the director's chair, what's next for Marv? Um, right now, man, just just revamping things and um, trying to get bigger projects, man. That's 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 my main goal. I would love to work with with the with the Tyler Perry or um uh, or Deontay Taylor or uh. Um, you know, just to mention those, those names, man. You know, people out in LA and you know working with a Fifty Cent or something like that. Um, Shit, if you could get a, a Peel movie, uh, that would be sick. A Peel, movie? A Jordan Peel. Oh yeah, if a Peel. Oh my God, I done an audition for Jordan Peel, but I didn't hear anything back, man. I was hurt. Uh, he was doing a um, a old um, mob movie, man. I can't think of the name of it. Jesus, um, but he was he's he was bringing that back out. And I can't think of the name of the title, but I, I done it sometime last year. Um, but you know, I didn't hear anything back. But you know, being able to work with him, that'd be freaking crazy. But so that's what my focus is now. So I'm revamping, um, you know, headshots, reels, um, setting up clips and everything else. Uh, management, I have a management out. Um, shout out to uh, Slam Management in, in Atlanta, um, who who manages me and um, uh Pastorini and Bobby Pas Pastorini and Bosby out of Houston, Texas. Um uh LA talent, I'm sorry, LA property talent in LA. Um and uh God, who else represents me? Jesus. 
Oh, Starburst Talent. Um, shout out to Miss Christina, who's also in L.A. Um, so I'm kind of revamping those and, and getting to the table with them just to, you know, kind of figure out how can we push, you know, a little bit harder this year. Um, I'm 35 now, so today. And, um, you know, uh, this is this is a journey. It's not a, it's not a, you know, it's a marathon, not a race. So, you know, it just kind of depends where you fit in, how you, you know, um, what you're gonna do to to make this whole thing work? So it's, it's not gonna be done overnight. It can be, but that's just not everybody else's story. So that's my that's my goal, man. To kind of put things in perspective and you know start making more strategic moves versus just you know doing it all out 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 out, out, out of order. So that's my focus. But, well, Marv, how important would you say it is, or is it not to have an agent? Uh, it's extremely important because those are the ones that the only ones that can get you in those rooms. So um, a lot of times with those those bigger budgets, if you want to be a part of those those projects, you have to have an agent because they won't speak to you independently. So your agent would have to create the conversation or submit rather. And if they like what they see, they'll ask you to submit a, a, an audition tape. And from that audition, they'll decide if they you know they want to work with you or not. But you have to have an agency because those those are the people that help steer your career in a sense. Um, because they have the knowledge of, it, especially if you're new in the game, um, and they they the one that's had, they're the ones that have the connections. So uh, without an agent, you can't really be in the room, if that makes sense. You know, unless you're already kind of self acclaimed talent. Um, I mean, other than that, you need somebody speaking for you. So yeah, that's extremely important. You can't you can't do it without them. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen Bricks. Perfect Wife too. Yeah, I forgot about Hero. Bruce. Yeah, is it anyone else? Any other movie I'm leaving out? Uh, Deception is it's a real good film. Um, uh, shout out to my man Justin Williams. He he, he directed that joint too. Um, her only fan. Her only fans. My biggest fan. Like you said, uh, Bricks is on there. Um, be on the lookout for Dirty Third. My man DeCorey. Um, he got his joint that's coming out. That he's a part of is is dope. What's the uh, name of that? Uh, Dirty Third, Dirty Third, the Next Generation. Oh, I've yeah. seen it. The trailer is. That's you man. in it? Yeah, you didn't watch. I was in like I was as an extra. I came in. Um, I just kind of set into it. So I'm kind of like in the pool hall scene, uh, but I don't have any lines or anything like that. But um, they missed out. Yeah, man. It was. Um, I got to it late, but uh, Propane and uh, Lil Kiki. Uh, just some of to name some of the rappers that's a part of it. H um, H P president, H D president. Um, I think he was a part of it too, if I'm not mistaken. I think he done a scene or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's 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 an amazing project, man. It's a, it's uh it's kind of a part two of Dirty Third, the first one they did back in the nineties. Right. So um, uh, Chico I watched Bean. F- yeah, I watched a few interviews. Derek spoke on it. Yeah, Chico you know, Bean's Dixon, a part of it. Yeah, Derek. For mm-hmm. people who don't know who Derek Dixon is, mm-hmm. he spoke on it. Yeah. Um. So that's that's gonna be a good joint. That's gonna hit sometime next year. I think it's actually gonna make it to theaters. It's an independent film, but I think they're they're gonna push that to put in the theater. So that's gonna be dope. Um. So yeah, be on the lookout for that, man. That's that's gonna be coming out. Um. Like I said, soon. Um. But really, the easiest way to find the films I've been a part of, uh, Love and Coffee, is, is another. Another good one too. Um, I, w- I always tell people that you know I just want to stay in the loop and stay tapped in with me. To just uh, you can type in Marvin Young on any of those platforms, uh, especially Tubi, and any any film that I've I've worked in um, should pop up, should populate for you. Um, there's a few on Apple TV. That's um, uh, Amazon Prime, Tubi, Vudu, uh, Redbox. Anywhere you can stream movies, you you can you can try it there. Except uh, you know, of course, stars and Netflix and all that stuff, the major major platforms. But you know, anything else that you can stream movies on, um, you can type in my name and you can find it there. Usually, if you Google Marvin Young, you can actually find some of the movies I've been a part of there as well. Yeah. We'll do. We'll do. Yeah. Well, I'm Pac Man James today with my guest Marvin Young on his birthday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Live at Acadiana Cast Studio, and we out. We out. This podcast is part of the Acadiana Cast Network. Go to AcadianaCast.com for more locally sourced content.